Okay guys, so today I'm going to tell you how to create a Docker image, how to pull it from Docker Hub, and then also how to push it to Docker Hub. Um, so the first step is um, we have a we have a DigitalOcean droplet turned on here. Um, this Nginx tutorial droplet. This has Docker installed. So we're going to connect to that. Okay, so I just logged into my DigitalOcean droplet. It's running Ubuntu. It's very straightforward. Um, I've already installed Docker. We can confirm that by running the docker list command. And you can see that we get the columns, but we have no docker containers running. So step one is um, we want to... So what we're going to do here is we're going to pull the Ubuntu image. Um, the Ubuntu image um, is just a Docker Hub image that's available. Um, and um, it is a standard Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu system. So you can pull any public image that's on Docker Hub here. We're going to pull the official Ubuntu image, and these are the names of it. So we're going to run Docker run, we're going to run the command Docker run Ubuntu. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to look for the Ubuntu image locally, and if it can't find it, it's going to look for it remotely on Docker Hub. And um, and then it will pull it down from Docker Hub, and and it should run a container of it locally. So as you can see, it's yeah pulling from Ubuntu. If it was local, it would yeah, and it was unable to find it locally. Um, okay, that looks like that's done. Let's do our docker list command. All right, so what we did is we, we pulled the image and then we ran a container, but we immediately exited. So it was um, we, so we can't really do anything in that container because it's not up and running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same exact thing, but I'm going to add a couple flags so that it runs in the background and it stays running and it doesn't exit. Um, you'll notice this time that since we already pulled it, it's going to, it's not going to download it, it's going to run it from the local image that we already stored. So we're just going to do docker run detach, and then the same exact name there. Um, so if I do a list command, Okay, so now we have the most recent container, which has been up for three seconds. Run it again, up for eight seconds. So it's just standing up there, which is perfect, because what we're going to want to do is log into there, make some changes, commit those changes, and then create a new image and push that image to Docker Hub. So as a next step, why don't we... We'll log into the container. So this is very a very useful command, docker exec dash it. We pass it our standing container. Your container has to be up and running or else it won't work. And then we're going to run the command bash. So it looks like nothing happened, but we were SSH'd root at my DigitalOcean droplet, Nginx tutorial. Now we're root at Docker container. And if I do a list, this is our Ubuntu image. Uh, we can do anything on this. We could download packages from the internet. We could set up services, anything we want. For the sake of this example, let's just make a directory. So make directory, let's call this test docker tutorial, nice cap so it's easy to find. 
cool. So now we have a new directory in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of it. So now I'm back in my di uh, DigitalOcean droplet. I'm going to run the docker list command and it's still standing up. It's still standing up and I'll show you if we log back in. We can just do that. So now we're back in. So our our directory is still there. So those changes were uh, persistent. Now, if we did kill this container and created a new container, it's not going to have this new directory that we created because it's it's creating a a container is a replica of the image. The image is the blueprint. Um, so what we want to do is we want to commit this container, this modified container, to the image, um, so that when we create new containers of that image, they reflect those changes. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to start looking at the images. So this is a Docker list images. Uh, let's, oh yeah, so Docker is actually <laughs> Docker is not installed in our Docker container. Um, so I just had to exit back out to our digital ocean droplet. Let's do okay. Let's do Docker images, which should list the images, and all we have is Ubuntu right now. Perfect, exactly what I expected. And um, so what we want to do is we want to. We want to commit our container to an image. So there's a certain way to do that. And we will do that by. So first, let's stop our running container. I'm not 100% sure if you need to do that if you're committing to an image. But I'm going to do it as a precaution here. Okay, so now while it's list, I expect them both to be exited. Yep. So let's remove the one that we don't really care about here. So to remove, you just use Docker RM. So now if I list again, okay, so we just have that container um, that we made a change to. So again, we want to commit that container to an image. So that looks like. All right, so the syntax is docker commit container ID, container ID. Okay, and then your username forward slash whatever image name you want to use. So let's call this modified Ubuntu looking good. Alright, so now I'm going to do an images list. Now we have two images. Ubuntu is what we pulled from Docker Hub. And now our new image uh, modified Ubuntu. So that's looking pretty good. So just, uh, just to make sure that this image is actually what we want. Let's run it. Let's run a container. So docker run. So we're going to stand it up in the background. We're going to list the containers. Let's log into this. And I'm expecting that folder to be there. So docker exec dash it container bash. Cool. So we have an image that if you create containers of now reflects the changes we made because we have that directory test docker tutorial. So that's awesome. All right, let's push it to Docker Hub. All right, so if I go to Docker Hub and I go to my dashboard, these are all my images right now. Um, yeah, most of them are private. I'm going to delete. Yeah, um, I'll delete that later. Okay, so 
what we're going to do is we're going to push our uh, image to Docker Hub. And if we wanted to, we could set it as public, meaning other people could pull it and do whatever they want with it. They wouldn't modify ours, but they could create like a branch. Um, but yeah, so let's upload. Um, let's upload modified Ubuntu to Docker Hub. So we're going to use the docker push command. So just first let's list the images. Docker push. And then we're going to throw it our image name. So this should be pretty straightforward. And it's going to prompt us to log in, obviously. Because right now it doesn't know that we're associated with that Docker Hub account. Um, all right, so it's prompting me for my username. All right, login succeeded, and now we're pushing our image. Um, quick note, these different line items here, um, the way Docker works is it pushes in layers. Um, so basically what happens is we basically just pushed up the image Ubuntu, with the only difference was we added a directory called test Docker tutorial. So Docker is sophisticated enough to realize that. So what it does is as it's pushing or pulling, it's running a differential um, between um, the image and the other layers um, in those environments. So it knows, hey, I don't need to reconstruct everything. It's really just Ubuntu plus this new directory here. Um, so push and pulls will reflect that. And as you can see, that was pretty quick. So it looks like everything was successful. So the next the next thing to do here is to just log into Docker Hub and see if my image is there. So I'm just going to refresh here. And I'm expecting, yeah, here it is. Um, this is my image. It is a public repository. So I think if I search for, cool, anyone can pull this. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all my local images. So first, let's delete the container. So docker ps negative a. So docker rm to delete containers, you just throw it the uh, container ID. That was still running, so looking good. And then I'm just going to delete this other container here. What I'm going to show you guys here is with nothing locally, nothing stored locally, I'm going to pull it again. And we're going to run it, and we're going to see what it looks like. So I'm going to delete my Docker images, my local Docker images as well. So slightly different command, Docker rm images, rmi. Then we pass it that. That looks good. So we'll do that again, but we'll do it with just Ubuntu. So what I'm doing here is I'm deleting everything related to Docker. So we have no containers running. We have no images local. So what I'm going to do is now just pretend I'm any old user and I want to pull this new image. And I want to play around with it. Well, I should be able to do that. So docker run. Let's detach it. Run it in the background. And I think I just pass it modified Ubuntu, I think. Maybe I have to pass it the whole thing, but I'm not sure. Let's try it. Modified Ubuntu. Yeah. So actually, we need my, my uh, username in there. Cool. It's downloading the layers. Let's list our images. There it is. Let's run a container of it.
And again, I'm detaching it so it's standing up in the background. So we can log into it in a second. List out our containers. Okay. Um, I stood up two when I when I downloaded. I also stood up one, and then I just downloaded another. So now we have two standing up, but that's fine. Let's um let's stop one of them. So Docker stop, and then Docker rm. Okay, so we should just have one now. And let's log into that and let's see if it reflects our changes. So docker exec dash it container ID bash list out. There it is. There's our, our directory. So we just made a very trivial change. We just added a directory, but you could write your whole app in there and any system can download your app and you could start up servers like, you know, it, it's a really, really powerful tool. And, um, you know, I think the value is pretty apparent. Um, it's something that we've used quite a bit with a lot of success. The workflow is easy. We haven't seen any issues. Um, so we've been very happy with it. But that is how you create images. That's how you push and pull images. And that's how you uh, create containers of those images.